Hey everybody, this is Jeff Play. You are watching CMS TV. And we are back on Chris Aiken Presents. It's uh, Chris Aiken and Eric Ferentino's and this guy, Mr. Terry Illwitz. Terry, how are you, man? Good, brother. Chris, how are you? It's good to see you once again, sir. It's been a little while. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, well, Terry, obviously, man, you are a very good... Well. Can you... I don't hear you very, very well. You're very low volume. You're echoing too, Chris. I am? Oh, yeah. let's see. Oh, well, live radio. <laughs> um, well, I have my microphone all the way up, but um, can you hear me a little better if I speak louder? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to. It's not too good, but it's okay. All right. Well, I'll speak loudly here. As, as you do on the microphone, you always speak loudly with, um, with XYZ and um, with your other bands. And you obviously um, have this new project that you're working on, All or Nothing. So talk a little bit about that. Sure. I mean, uh, we just did a show with the kids. Uh, now you have to understand I call them the kids because they're 21 and 25 years old. So it is not demeaning whatsoever. I'm, I love the kids, they call me dad, uh, and uh, I think they have a great future, and we've done shows together, many, many shows together, um, them and uh, uh, George Lynch, of course, and myself, and um, Paul Monroe from XYZ, and last show we did was Saturday night in um, Mount Clements in uh, Michigan, and was completely sold out. Uh, so it's going well. It's going very well. I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now, Terry, for for you personally, um, you know, you're you're working with uh, Brett Carlisle, who is now in Great White, and you obviously were in Great White um, previously, which kind of seems weird as an outsider, you know, that that played out. But tell tell us a little bit about how that all worked out. Well. Um, I don't think it's, uh, I got to be honest with, can you hear me okay? Because it says, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. yeah. Um, it just happened that Eric Stevens uh, is a buddy of mine. Her Eric is, uh, said, hey, you want to do some shows? Um, I got this great band. And I said, yeah, yeah. So I, I met with the kids a little while ago, I, I think a year and a half ago. And, and immediately we liked each other. They were they're so much fun. They're from uh, Alabama. And we call each other a redneck and we're just having so much fun and um we um i did some shows with them and then uh, i i knew I, i've heard that great white was eventually looking for a new singer and i thought uh i talked to eric about that and we thought a brett would be the perfect match for for great white because uh he's young he's good looking he sings very well and um I've heard him uh, sing Great White before, um, and he's, he's, he's a really good singer. So um, when Eric said, what do you think of that, if he would to join Great White, I'm like, oh, it's a great idea. Um, and uh, he joined Great White, and I'm happy for him. You, you, you need to understand that I am not um, uncomfortable with the situation whatsoever, uh, not jealous whatsoever. Um, I had no intention of joining the band back whatsoever either. I'm happy for Great White. I'm very happy for Brett. It's a great future for him. It's a great uh, stepping stone to go somewhere else and to be performing with a band that has a, a great past and great songs. And uh, and why not? So I'm excited for the kid, you know? He's great. No, you're right. He definitely is, and, and he fits the role well. And, you know, it's just kind of odd for you you know, I, I have to think to see the guy that kind of, as I remember it, it did not, it was not the most uh, 
pleasant of handshakes and walk away. And that has to be somewhat weird, you know, now being in a project with the guy that kind of took your job, so to speak, no? Yes and no, not really. I mean, you know, things happen when you're in a band. Um, you're in a band, you don't see eye to eye. It doesn't mean you don't like each other. You just want different things. I think Great White ultimately was looking for something else. And I was looking for something else. I wanted, I wanted something different. And I got what I wanted. They got what they wanted. They had um, Mitch, who's a, who's a good singer. And then they had uh, somebody else. And I'm happy for them. You know, I have... It is not uncomfortable at all. Although we went separate ways in a strange way in a way via email which is kind of strange but it's it's the thing it is no um uh there's no hard feelings whatsoever you need to understand that i i keep in touch with the guys um in fact i just uh uh e emailed uh, uh um uh the guy audi a few days ago um okay. i even emailed um bridget and uh mm -hmm. and mark uh, on saturday night because uh, I know they're they're getting they have a big anniversary coming up, so I wish them the best and everything. Dude, man, I have no animosity. I'm very happy. I'm very comfortable in my shoes, uh, and I'm very happy for them. And life goes on. You know, you can't be bitter. You just have to. The thing is, when things happen to you, is what are you gonna do about it? Are you gonna cry and dwell on, on the negative, or are you going to do something about it? And for a little while, of course, I was, you know, upset like everybody else, but I didn't post anything negative or anything because I think it was wrong to do that. Um, but eventually um, I moved on and they moved on and everybody's happy. Right. And, and, and you know, you, you definitely did. You did the Gypsies record, uh, that you did that. And now from what I see as recently as like four or five hours ago, you're right in the middle of making new XYZ music. So talk a little bit about that. Well, I'm I'm extremely happy about that. Uh, well, here's the truth. The truth is, we um, we we I wrote those songs a little while ago for X Y Z, and uh, we didn't see eye to eye as far as the production, as you okay. know. Like it is always in a band. I wanted to be. I wanted to do more of one thing. Pat wanted to do more of something else. So we left those songs in a hard drive for a couple of years talking to each other about it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, and finally, uh, we made a compromise. We came up with a compromise and I talked to E, our producer, and I said, okay, I'm coming to Denver, which I am in Denver today. I said, I'm coming to Denver to, um, to, to work on the guitars. And, uh, here I am. And we, um, uh, we have this wonderful guitar player named Mark Murtha is, um, I know he's an unknown guitar player, but he's wonderful. And um, he decided to give us a hand and the sound is tremendous. Uh, it's really, really, I'm very, very excited about the new XYZ songs. Um, it, I think it's gonna surprise some people because it's a little bit, it's, it's not like the first or second album. It's a continuation of what, where we left off. Okay. Uh, what I'm trying to say is if you listen to the first Led Zeppelin album, and I do not, you know, by all mean, think I'm Led Zeppelin by 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 all <laughs> mean. But if you listen to the Beatles or the the Stones or all those great bands, um, they come up with the new, the first album. Like for example, uh, uh, Led Zeppelin one, which was a masterpiece, and then they moved on, and then they evolve and they release. Um, physical graffiti, which is a big departure, but it's still the same band. It's still the same vocals, the guitars, they're just more produced. So the new songs are a little bit more produced, but they're still rocking. It's still XYZ. It's still, the vocals are still me and I'm still singing my ass off. And um, just uh, the production is a little bit better. I mean, I wouldn't say better. It's still a little bit um, more mature. That's what I'm trying to say. Sure. And, you know, I'll argue with you on this forever, Terry. I still will say the best record that XYZ did is Letter to, Letter to God. That record is so heavy and so just vicious from you guys. I love that record, man. So if you're going in that vein, all good here. Yeah, well, Letter to God is a great album. Um, 
uh, you know, it came at a time where rock was not so happening. So it went, it was in today, gone today, you know, I mean, unfortunately, but it happens in the music business. A lot of people have released albums and songs that were brilliant or good. And unfortunately, no one, no one paid attention to them. I'll give you an example. Uh, if you listen to Leonard Cohen, one of the greatest composer, a songwriter, uh, who j recently passed away, he wrote the song Hallelujah. When he released the song Hallelujah, the record company didn't want to release it. MCA said, nah, the song is no good. So they did not release the album. And wow. he had to go through an indie album, indie record company to release the album. And really nobody paid attention to that. People were like, yeah, it's okay. Until somebody else decided to do a cover of that song, you know the story, and all of a sudden this song become and people say, oh my God, what a great <laughs> song. So, you know. Right on, definitely. Now, now, um, Terry, for you, um, I, I want to swing back to All or Nothing. Um, obviously, George Lynch played on it, who I'm sure you've run into a zillion times over the years, but did you bring him into the project, or were you just as surprised as anybody when he was a part of it, or what? Well, you know, Chris, what happened is um, I had that song called Dead or Alive, and I didn't know what to do with it. I wrote the song a while ago and didn't know what to do with it. And uh, Eric said, oh, you should record that song with the kids. Uh, I said, yeah, okay. So I presented the songs to Jacob uh, and Brett, and they said, oh, yeah, we want to record it and everything. I said, great. And Eric came up with the idea. I says, what about George? You know George very well. I'm like, yeah, let me call George. So I sent George a text. I said, would you be interested in doing a track with me? He said, sure, send me the song. And I sent him the songs, and within a few minutes, I got a reply saying, I'm in. And that was it. And um, George, you have to understand, George is one of my all-time favorite guitarists of all time. Same. Uh, George is a beast. George is, belongs to those very rare guitar players that have not only a style, but the sound. Um, George is just a very unique guitar player very mm -hmm. unique and um i'm in fact I, I saw him saturday we had a great show together and uh we are working on other things together i, I he sent me he said uh send me your new ideas see if i can come up with a new riff i'm like okay you got it so i'm looking forward to a great collaboration with uh all or nothing of course brett and jacob and am and skyler uh, the, the members of the band and george as well as a guitar player so um I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, the unique thing is with George is that George, George is so busy, yet every project he brings something different, which is amazing when you think about the fact that the guy's in 400 bands. It, always a unique sound with every project he plays on. Well, he's a, George is very talented uh, again he's one of my favorite all-time guitar player and he's a very talented beast i mean he's he, he belongs to to you know george is on his own you know what i mean there's not mm -hmm. too many guitar players there are a lot of great guitar players out there but there are very few jeff beck very few uh very few randy rose very few uh, uh uh george lynch you know very few uh guitar player like that that they have their own thing whether you like one or another, you like Randy Rhodes, or you like George, or you like, uh, I don't know, whomever you like, Yngwie, those guys have their own thing. And that's pretty rare because a lot of musicians in general are really good, but I would say, not to be disrespectful, but they're, they're uh, uh, generic. I wouldn't say generic, it's just like, well, they, they play well, but they're not reinvent anything, or they're not bringing something new. Um, mm -hmm. The Ingve Mountstein, the Jeff Beck, the uh, uh, Randy Rhodes, the George Lynch, um, they brought something else. You know, of course, Eddie, of course, by all means, Eddie course. Van Halen, by all means, the greatest of all time. Jimi Hendrix also. Those guys brought something new, you know. Mm-hmm. When, when you, I, I'm always curious about this for singers and especially creative guys like yourself. When you have the opportunity to work with somebody that is that creative, like a George Lynch, and then you go on to working with other people that, no disrespect to them, but are not as creative as 
you know, these once in a generational talents, is it difficult to work within their limitations when you've worked with somebody that can pretty much do anything that you think of? No, no, because, um, uh, you know, Chris, I'm, 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 I'm a producer and I, I know how to adjust and I don't, I'm very comfortable working with, with anyone and I am really good at uh, making people feel comfortable in the studio and explaining myself, expressing myself, my ideas. And ultimately the people I work with are good. They're good. They may not have the same talent as uh, Ingve or, or, or Michael Schenker or, or of course George, but they do have some talent. I guarantee sure. you, uh, I don't work with Bozo the Clown, you know, so those guitar players are good, you know. Uh, they just need a little push. That's all, and I'm here for that. I, I I hear melodies in my head all the time. I'm like, you know, why don't you try this? And and I, I say that in a very a proper manner. I I'm not trying. I'm not pushy, and I make people feel comfortable in the studio. And you know, um, like today I was working with Mark. Mark may not have the past or, or the the credit. I would say, as someone like George, but he's got great ideas as well. You just need to, someone has to help him bring those ideas out. And guess what? They came out and they were like, oh, here we go. Great. So, you know, right. just have to, to be kind and, and help people. Excellent. Well, Terry, um, obviously, man, big year for you. Got new XYZ on the horizon. We've got All or Nothing and we've got this George Lynch collaboration. So where should we tell people to go to keep up with you online and everything that you're doing? Thank you so much chris i think people can go online i'm very easy to to uh uh online i mean you can find me online under my name first name terry Illus on facebook instagram twitter tiktok all that stuff you know you just 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 go on facebook and put terry Illus and that's it or or tiktok or that's instagram and i i usually reply pretty fast because i like to be in touch with the fans and the friends i like to reply because i i'm grateful to still have fans, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a young chicken, you know, and um, <laughs> I'm grateful to have fans. And every time I have the opportunity to, to, to talk to them or to, uh, I don't know, to get, a, I, you know, when I meet them or when I can give them a, a free pass or something to a show, why not? You know, I, I just gave 10, 10 passes in, in um, last Saturday because some people didn't have either money or, or you know, they were going through hard times. So I just said, sure, if you don't have a pass, here you go. I'll give you a pass. Why not? It doesn't cost me right. a dime and I have the passes. Why not? Exactly. Well, Terry, one last question before we play uh, Dead or Alive, the video here to wrap this up. But, and this has nothing to do with music. It's just something that is driving me crazy. And me and Eric have joked about it. Early in your career, when I first met you, I swear on a stack of Bibles, your last name was Illuis, and now it's Illus. Did you change your name, or am I just nuts? Yeah, my name is, I, I, you want to hear a funny story? When yeah. I started my career, Mandela I, effect. My, when I started my career, I was fascinated. I was, I've always loved Sylvester Stallone, and my first album, very first EP, I called myself Terry Stallone. <laughs> I ripped him off, and but I put an E at the end, so it would be Terry Stallone. Um, I was looking for a name because people said, "Oh, you look like a, you look like a Sylvester Stallone." I'm like, "Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, I look like Rocky." Yeah. I was gonna yeah, say yeah, Ponce. Yeah. So uh, I was gonna do a Ponce. I look like, "Yeah, how you doing?" You know, so I looked like him. So because I was boxing at the time, like, so I stole his last name, but no, my real name is. Illus, I-L-O-U-S. All right. Well, I promise I'm never going to say it wrong again. So one more time, it is Terry Illus. Got it. Uh, the new the new single that is out there is All or Nothing is the band. Uh, Dead or Alive is the video. And uh, Terry, um, as always, man, it's great catching up with you. And um, thank you for coming on Chris Aiken Presents. You guys are great. I really, one more thing is, sure. I really support you. I really appreciate your support. What you're doing helping the bands not just my band but everybody else in the music scene um uh, all from i mean i thank you 
very very much because without you i mean we can release so many songs but without you guys i mean you know you, you're there to promote them and everything and and as an artist i want to thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you so much all good well terry uh here it is we're gonna check it out right now it is dead or alive it is all or nothing right here on chris aker presents thank you bye guys